England and Borussia Dortmund star midfielder Jude Bellingham is set to be on the move next summer, but where is he going to go? Right, people, welcome back to the channel. We're going to get into Jude Bellingham conversation, someone we obviously want a lot at our club. But before we get into it, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. We are on the road to 5K and all support is massively appreciated. Right, there's two tweets I want to talk about, Joe. Obviously, we did a stream recently um, on the channel here. We go live sometimes too, for those of you who don't know. We got a uh, bombazzo from Mike Keegan saying, City have held initial conversations with Jude Bellingham. Does this come as a surprise to me or you? I don't think so, because we're with the hottest prospects in world football it's only natural that the hottest clubs in world football are swimming around are swimming around trying to get them to come we have Erling Haaland we have the facilities we have the manager we have the trophies we have the team what is there for Jude Bellingham not to like about Manchester City now Jacobs Ben who I believe is from CBS Sports Galazzo he has put up a, a bit of an update about the Jude Bellingham situation not so long ago I believe it was today he says Man City target Jude Bellingham will use the same system Erling Haaland used before he joined City when deciding his next club Jude will decide who he joins dispassionately focusing on facilities teammates and salary etc now we we know, Joe, that Liverpool have thrown their ring in the hat, even though some journalists are saying that they're losing confidence in, in their chance of signing Jude Bellingham. Real Madrid, of course, will throw their ring in the hat to sign Jude Bellingham because that's what Real Madrid do. I've seen Man United throw their name in the ring in the hat to try and sign Jude Bellingham too because that's what big clubs try to do. But we, like we spoke about on our live stream recently, believe there is no reason for Jude Bellingham not to want to come to Manchester City. What are your thoughts on this, first of all, before we get into the big Fabrizio Romano one? I think it all kind of comes down to timing a little bit as well. If you look at the fact that how he's going to choose based on a project, based on the money, et cetera, et cetera, we already know that we can match anyone in terms of wages. Um, we don't often choose to, but we know that we can do that if it's necessary to acquire a player. And um, yeah, I think it's all down to timing because if you look at the fact how he's going to look at a project like Haaland did, I mean, we're going to get top four. We're going to be in the Champions League. We are nailed on to be competing for trophies for... A long, long time. If you look at Liverpool, no one has a clue where Liverpool are going to be in the next two, three seasons. No one knows if they're going to get top four this season. I think they probably will, but it's like it's not set in stone. Newcastle look good. You expect Chelsea to bounce back. Spurs are obviously in the mix. United look a bit good, although they, you know, they can throw an odd result in there at times. So I don't know. It all comes down to timing, really. I know there's a they put they're putting the same pressure they did on Haaland, which is a uh, decide your future now. Either stay or go. You know we want you to make a decision as soon as possible, so we know what's going to happen. So I think if he's going to decide after the World Cup, then the City are the most nailed on choice here because we're the most stable. I think us and Real Madrid are the most stable out of the two, and of course him being English, he probably has aspirations to play in the Premier League. So that would put us in front. I know that's not how football always works. You don't always get what you want in life. It doesn't always go the perfect way, but I'm very, very confident in us getting this done. I mean, there's rumours of Gundogan leaving on a free. He doesn't know what's happening with his contract. He's sort of saying, we'll see at the end of the season. We don't know whether Bernardo Silva's off to Barcelona. We don't know whether they can even be bothered chasing him anymore. So, but the word on the street the word in the press, the word in the in the uh, the lips of all the journalists, if Man City want to sign a midfielder, and Jude Bellingham is the most linked midfielder that we've had so far, so I can a hundred percent see this happening. I think it's just more of a matter of time. I've got a couple of thoughts on this, uh, and the first being is the the point you made is that we know that being an English man, he probably wants to come back to the Premier League and. Our position in terms of a squad uh, and where we need to improve on or where we need some replenishment is that we don't need to go out and go for an overhaul. We don't need to clear out a lot of the squad. We don't need to bring in, you know, five, six players, maybe like other clubs do. I know Liverpool fans will say that they probably need to bring in two, three, four, maybe five players, likewise at Man United. So they're going to have to stretch out their budget a bit more. They're going to have to spread out their, their finances and, you know, be more be more pragmatic in the way they spend their cash because they can't afford to go out and spend big money on one player, even though I'm sure they would all love Jude Bellingham. Whereas we can, obviously, we know we have the money, we have the resources to, to spend this kind of cash and, and, and bring in these kind of players. We've done it recently. We've, we've spent quite a bit of money in recent years, even though we're in an s blend surplus. So we can really go out and say to Borussia Dortmund, we're willing to give you your 80 to 110 million pounds, which is what I believe it will cost to get Jude Bellingham to get him out of Borussia Dortmund. 
And also the point you touched on is that we're expecting one of, if not both, of Bernardo and Gundo to leave next summer. I know there's rumours of a, a Gundo and extension. I know City are about to open up talks with Bernardo Silva about a possible extension. But should one of them leave, I think we, we have to go out and bring in a sufficient replacement. And it would have to be a replacement if they're right here, right now. It could not be a player, say, like, Sergio Gomez, who is very much a player for the future. You know, you bring him in on the basis that you're not going to throw him in the deep end straight away. You're not going to say, right, you're playing in a derby tomorrow or you're playing a Champions League final tomorrow. We're going to give you time to bet in and get used to it. We need a player who we know and we can trust will come in and bet in straight away and, and be a natural, especially in that area of the pitch. You know, midfield is such an important area of the pitch. It's the engine room of the whole team. You need someone who'll come in and do a good job. Even at the young age of 19, Jude Bellingham has proved that he can do it at the highest level. He's highly rated by both Gareth Southgate and, you know, in term, on the uh, international stage, as well as at Champions League level and, you know, Bundesliga level too with Borussia Dortmund. So, I think he's one of those players that we would view as very much an investment for the right here, right now, as well as long term. Being 19 years old, we could see 9, 10, 11 years of Jude Bellingham in Manchester City if everything went to plan. I know football is cyclical. I know things can change. And I'd like to think we'll always be challenging for the highest honours, but you can't guarantee that. There's no guarantees in football. But if there is any guarantees right here, right now, it's that we are probably the only club in England that is closest to challenging for trophies every single year for the foreseeable. I know we're still waiting on a Pep extension sort of confirmation. Will he, won't he? We're waiting on that. We'll do plenty of videos on that. That'll play a massive uh, factor in any negotiations that Jude Bellingham undergoes in Manchester City. Now, you saw on the thumbnail for Bitsy Romano. Why? Because he has given us some updates on the situation too. He says Man City could be one of the clubs in the running for Jude Bellingham and they would also be prepared to wait one more year before signing him. While the this might suit Borussia Dortmund, it will also depend on the player's decision. The word is that Bellingham will take obviously a very similar approach, like I said, from the Jacobs Ben update to Erling Haaland. And Erling Haaland, you know, he was very strategic and the way he chose his club. I think if you're going to be strategic about where you go and you take all those things into account, which was in the first tweet, I think I think it still points to City. Now, the big thing that um, is in this tweet from Romano or this piece of information from Romano is that City will be p prepared to wait one more year to sign, uh, to sign Jude Bellingham. Jude Bellingham is, if I'm 99% certain, has two years left on his Borussia Dortmund contract. Um, after this summer. After this summer, he'll have two more years left on his contract. So if City were to wait one more year, Dortmund will obviously have to sell uh, Jude Bellingham for a massively decreased fee, a much lower fee than what they will get. I think if Borussia Dortmund want to maximise their, their revenue or, or their transfer fee they can get for Jude Bellingham, they need to sell him this summer. They will probably, like I said, put a price tag of anywhere between £80 million to sort of 110 I think that's the region they can look for for him. And I think we're the club to pay it. Um, what are your thoughts on that situation, Joe? Yeah, we know we can pay it. We usually make sort of one marquee signing every summer because we don't rebuild. We like to refresh because our squad's usually good enough where we don't need, like you said, a mass overhaul. I, I do think, however, the whole wait in a year, it, we're prepared to do it, but it won't go that. I, I, I don't think it'll go that extra year. I think Dortmund, uh, you know, they are a selling club regardless of how you view them in terms of their stature. At the moment, at least, they are a selling club. I mean, just look at Haaland, like he had a release clause. They are a selling club. They're a feeder club to Bayern Munich. They are viewed as that. Um, that whole waiting a year is more in my eyes, at least, City saying, we're willing to wait for the player. Like, we want him this bad that if you just flat out refuse to sell him, then we will be here next year when he's on a cut price. I think that's more of a... More of a thing towards Bellingham's side, like his own personal feelings towards this, where he'll see that City are willing to wait for him. They are willing to possibly go without a midfield replacement to go and get him next season. But I don't think it'll go the extra year. I think that's sort of really just paper talk as to how interested we are. Um, I think that this summer will be it. Because like you said, Dortmund, they know that they're going to lose him. They're not stupid. They're not going to wait until he has a year left on his contract because then you're looking from what you were thinking sort of 80 to 110. You're now looking at 60 to 80, like that sort of range, which for a player of his quality is very, very low. And you'd imagine with the progress that he's making, it'd be even better come a year. So I think they do sell in the summer and I think that CR are in the lead. We've been told that we've been in the lead before, but I, I believe it now. We're also in the fortunate position that we're not in a rush. Like I said, we, we know we will need to sign a midfielder of, of a high quality or a high standard to replace these players, but we're not exactly stuck either, are we, people? Like We're not exactly uh, in a drought of midfielders. I mean, 
I'm confident that we will get an extension of either Gundogan or Bernardo. I don't think we'll get both. I think one of them will sign an extension. So there you go. You have De Bruyne and Bernardo or De Bruyne and Gundo already in your starting 11. If we need to wait that extra year, then you've got Grealish, you've got Palmer, you've got Foden uh, and plenty of others who can play. Calvin Phillips could probably play as an eight if need be. You've got plenty of players who can do those roles. So we're not completely stuck. So to say to Bellingham, yeah, right, we'll wait another year for you would mean a lot to do Bellingham, I think. But... I still think we will do whatever we can to get that player this summer. Uh, I've obviously heard, um, and according to Mike Deegan, it, it's true that City have made contact with Jude Bellingham and they're keen to get him. The word is that Erling Haaland has told Bellingham to come to Manchester City. Bellingham has now gone to the World Cup out in Qatar with a number of, um, with, with England obviously, and we've got five players in that squad. You best believe people, as human beings, they'll be saying, man, you know, it's a great club, you know, the manager's great or this isn't great or that is great, blah, blah, blah. They'll be saying all about Manchester City and the pros and cons or what they think of it. So this is the kind of things you have to take into account. And listen, my personal opinion is that we will get Jude Bellingham. I'm sure Liverpool fans may tell you that they think they'll get him and they're probably hearing other news, um, you know, that are more biased towards them from their kind of journalists and we're probably hearing things from our journalists too. So you have to take it all with a pinch of salt, but also... Make your own opinions too. So what opi whatever opinions you do form, leave them down below in the comments. We'd love to hear what you think about the Jude Bellingham situation. Do you want him at Manchester City? How highly do you rate him? And are you going to watch him in this year's World Cup? I would say so. Make sure you hit the like button on your way out. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more content. We're on the road to 5K. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss it when we upload or go live. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Good night.